Hey guys, so I've got a little haul to share with you today. Um, mostly it's just some skincare bits and a few books, but a friend of mine from work passed along a few makeup items that I wanted to share with you because I'm, I'm really excited about them. Um, me and my friend Erin, we've been passing makeup back and forth for a couple of months now, and these are, these are special. Um, special to me, anyways, because I've never tried MAC foundations before. And she passed these guys along to me. This is the MAC Studio Sculpt Foundation in NC15. Now I've heard this is being discontinued, um, but I've, I've been dying to try it. Dying, absolutely. Um, I've heard so many amazing things about this. Loads of people I know rave about this foundation, so I'm excited to try it. Even though it's going away, at least I can say I tried it. And um, if I like it, I'll know what texture and everything it is so I can find something comparable. So I'm excited to try this guy. And then we have a MAC Mineralized Foundation and this is the Moisture SPF 15 Foundation. And this guy is in NC20. Um, I've swatched both of them on my skin so I've got an idea of the texture. This one is slightly thicker and the Mineralized Foundation is a lot lighter and more emollient. Um, Colour wise, they're both pretty good. Um, I mean, obviously the NC15, um, the NC20 even, is a little bit darker, but I think it's more of a tonal thing. I, it seems to be the further along in the range you get color-wise, they get more yellow, whereas in W side they get more pink. Uh, but this is, whilst it's, it's not a whole lot darker, the mineralized one is is obviously more yellow. Um, I haven't tried either of them all over my face yet so I'll have to see how that goes but I am super excited to try them. Um, she also sent over um, this little su skin supplement from um, Lush and this is in Jackie Oats and uh, that's what it looks like. I've never tried the skin supplements before, or the colour supplements, whatever you want to call them. Erin um, said that she was told by the girl in the store that you should mix it with moisturiser because um, if you used it by yourself it would be too thick, um, it would give you ridiculous cake face. Um, but Erin couldn't get any pigmentation out of it or any coverage. And just watching on my skin there, I'm not really, I'm not really seeing much coverage either. So I don't, I'm not sure where the sales assistant was getting cake face from. Um, but it is very pale. I kind of want to give this a try as like an under eye concealer because it is really creamy and emollient. And um, see how it goes, and I will let you know. Um, if it's good or not <laughs> but yeah that's it makeup wise thank you so much to Erin for sending those over to me um, I appreciate it a lot and I, I look forward to us swapping makeup back and forth in the future um, as for things I've purchased myself um, I did place a couple of orders on Boots because they had a points event and they were doing amazing deals on nappies uh, <laughs> I've become one of those persons, one of those persons, one of those persons that can't even talk right. I've become one of those people that are tracking nappy deals. Um, but yeah, so they had an amazing deal on nappies and a points event. And I needed to make up the order for free shipping. And on Boots you get free shipping over four to five pounds and um, stuff was on sale. So I picked it up. First of all is two things from L'Oreal. These were on an, a promotional offer because they're new. They were only £5 each and these are the um, pure clay masks. I wanted to get all three but they didn't have the brightening one which is like the one that's like a reddish orangey kind of brick colour. Um, I got the purity mask which is the one with aloe vera and this is the one that um, it kind of just sucks everything out of your pores and it's good. It's really good. Like you know when you oh 
oopsies. Like you know when you have a clay mask on and it dries and you see the little dots of oil that's pulled out your skin? I had it on my cheeks. It was pulling oil out of my cheeks. That's how good this stuff is. Um, so if you have really oily skin, I mean, hell, give this a try. I mean, it's, it's good. I haven't tried the um, charcoal one yet. I do have a couple of other charcoal masks to go through before I get to this one. So, yeah. Um, I'll have to wait to see how this one goes. But if it's anything like this one, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be good. Um, I might pick up the brightening one if I, I stumble across it. I'm not going to go out my way to get it. But if it's there and I'm there and things happen, then they do. Um, I'm not entirely... I can't remember what the the special ingredient is in the brightening one, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I also picked up some more Botanics skincare. I love Botanics skincare. I use, I, I use so much of their products. Um, I picked up two serums. This first one is the Super Serum from the Radiant Youth range. Now, I threw away the packaging. It was kind of stupid because literally there is nothing of of any use on the pot on the bottle at all. It just has the directions. There's no ingredients, no no special bump or anything. It's all on the box and I threw it out. All I remember is it had lots of oils in it. Um, I will link the product in the info box so you can go and check it out and um, read the information if you're interested. Um, but I do remember it had lots of oils in it. It I've used it and it feels really nice on the skin. It kind of reminds me of a lighter version of the Clarins Beauty Flash Balm. Um, and, it's, and it's definitely not as sticky as the Beauty Flash Balm. And it smells just the same and it smells delicious. Um, and I've been using this um, every other night. The other serum I got is the Radiance Concentrate Serum from the All Bright range and I use the face wash from this range and this has hibiscus flower which um, an essence from that is a natural AHA. I think it's a form of glycolic acid. I'm not entirely sure. I will correct myself if I'm wrong. Um, but that's what is in this and it's just a, 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 a lovely frosted glass bottle with a pipette and um, I alternate these guys every night. I haven't used either of them long enough to be able to see a huge difference in my skin texture but I will let you know in the future how it's getting on. Um, lastly from Botanics I picked up one of the cleansing toners from again from the Allbright range. It has the hibiscus derived AHA in it as well and I kind of figured this might be a good alternative, uh, a cheaper alternative to the Clarins brightening exfoliating toner. That I believe is around the £20 mark and you don't get as much in it as you get in this one. I think that only has maybe 100 mils in it whereas you get 250 in this one and I believe this is um, about £3 something. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's a way cheaper alternative. Yes, it won't be as, 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 as effective Gosh, I'm struggling with the words at the moment. It's like I can't get my teeth around my tongue. <laughs> yeah, it won't be as effective as the brightening exfoliating toner from Clarins, but that's okay. It's okay. I'm I'm willing to to get a little less aggressive with my skincare. But if you know I'm using this, I'm using this guy, I'm using the face wash in the range. I think that's enough AHA for one gal. Plus, I do have the Nip Fab Glycolic um, Serum that I use like like once or twice a week. I don't want to. I don't want to go overboard with that stuff. I I don't. Um, if you guys want a skincare video, 
let me know. I will quite happily do one for you rather than me sitting here ram randomly rambling on about what I use and when. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, lastly, I want to share with you some books. I had a gift card from my birthday, which I, I was holding on to for as long as possible. Because you guys know I like to buy books. I do. And um, in the current financial situation, I can't really um, be as, as free with the book buying as I want to be. So I, I kind of held off until there was stuff that I definitely wanted. And um, so I went to Waterstones and I picked some stuff up and I used points, I used money from my rewards card and I actually only spent £4 on these books. So first of all is Nod by Adrian Barnes and this is about a world where everyone stops sleeping apart from a select few people who can still sleep and they have the same dream. All of them, they share the same dream. The people who can't sleep are called the awakened and the people who can sleep are called sleepers and I read the first couple of pages and from what I can grasp the awakened are split into like two camps. There are the people that have been who are so sleep deprived they're like unable to function and then there's the ones that have entered the period of psychosis and they sacrifice the people who can sleep. So yeah. It's quite a small book, um, but I've heard amazing things about it, so I'd like to see how they've, um, how well they've executed this idea, because it sounds amazing. I heard amazing things about it, but it could be really crap. So I'm looking forward to see, to reading this and see how it is. I will let you guys know in the future. Um, I also picked up The Departure by Neil Asher and this is the first book in the Owners series. So far there is only three books. I think it's just a trilogy. It may be expanded, I'm not entirely sure, but I will read the back of this one for you because I can't summarise this one in a, in a short little spiel. Um, will the price of salvation be our own humanity? The Argus space station looks down on a nightmarish earth and from the safe distance the committee enforces a despotic rule. There are too many people and too few resources. They need 12 billion to die before Earth can be stabilised. So corruption is rife, people starve and the poor are policed by mechanised overseers and identity reader guns. Citizens already fear the brutal inspectorate with its pain inducers. But to reach its goal, the committee must the committee will unleash satellite laser weaponry that taking carnage to a new level. This is the world Alan Saul wakes to, travelling in a crate destined for the Kali incinerator. How he got there he doesn't know, but he remembers pain and his tormentor's face. He also has company. Janus, a rogue intelligence inhabiting for forbidden hardware in his skull. As Janus shows Saul an earth stripped of hope, he resolves to annihilate the, commi the committee and their regime once, he dis once he's discovered who he was and killed his interrogator. Yeah, it sounds pretty grim and apocalyptic, but I like that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of very, the world they live in is very like 1984-ish, the, 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 the establishment is always watching and everything is full of security cameras and the hardware it's talking about is he has a computer implanted in his head and it brings up like an interface on his eye, it's kind of like Google Glasses but in, in you. It's, it sounds like pretty freaky technology but um, I could see that happening. I really could. Lastly from Waterstones I picked up Seven Eves from by ugh, I picked up Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson and this one is pretty cool. I'll, again I will read the back. When a catastrophic event renders the Earth a ticking time bomb, it triggers a feverish race against the inevitable. An ambitious plan to, is devised to ensure the survival of humanity far beyond our atmosphere. 
5,000 years later, the survivor's progeny embark on another audacious journey into the unknown, to an, an, alien, to an alien world utterly transformed by cataclysm and time. Earth. Woo. Basically, at the start of this book, the moon blows up gets hit by an asteroid and it disintegrates and then um, breaks apart and uh, I'm guessing that kind of brings about the end of the world as we know it being as our our moon kind of controls water flow and everything um, so yeah I'm I'm super excited for this one it's, it's a hunker it is huge but I'm kind of looking forward to diving into this one but after I finish this one. I pre-ordered this one from Amazon because it's Karen Swan. I love Karen Swan. Every book she brings out, I buy. I buy it. If I can get it, usually I get it on the day of release, but if not, I get it soon after. I freaking love Karen Swan. She writes, um, like, sophisticated chick lit, um, they're all girls who are very empowered and in high flying jobs and always involves some sort of romance element but there's always some sort of intrigue or mystery running through it. This one has a bit of like a crime scandal going through it. It involves um, art dealership and um, the, um, the whole aspect of Jewish people during the Second World War having their art bought from them and sold to the, the Nazi party or sold to people who support the Nazi party and in this book they find this this wealth of art and they have to document it and trace its history and there's one painting in specific where um, it was owned by a Jewish family and was sold to a notorious art dealer <laughs> in the Second World War period and they have to trace it beyond this man otherwise it's no longer um, a legitimate purchase um, they need to prove it was a legitimate purchase and not one of the you know not a purchase by the Nazi party and it's really intriguing I love the way Karen Swan writes and um, I love her characters and her stories and they, they deal with really real topics. Really real topics. <laughs> yeah, like the first one I've read, I read was um, all about divorce and finding yourself later in life. Another one was about um, a woman who was forgetting her past. Um, I don't want to spoil that one because literally you don't, you, you don't really work out until like a good three quarters of the way through the book but it's a biggie and that one was um summer without you that was really good and the women the the female they're all female leads and they're all very stylish and high flying and glamorous and she does um weave in a lot of pop culture references like in this one she she throws a bit of shade at el james <laughs> I kind of like that um but yeah and in like summer without you she they they do these these clothing auctions using twitter and stuff and it's just little things like that that make it very now reading but it's still a lot more substance to it than your average romance or chiclet novel so yeah, it's like sophisticated chiclet. Anyways, I would totally recommend Karen Swan. Go get you some. Anyway, that is everything that I have sort of accumulated in July. Um, as I've said, I'd, I don't plan on buying a lot of things. I, I feel weird doing a disclaimer, but I just feel like I should put this out there. I don't feel, I don't, I don't plan on buying lots of things. If I pick things up, I will and I will collect them and show you them at the end of the month if not then there won't be a show and tell video that month so yeah um i also want to know what you guys um thought about me talking about books in videos do you want to see book videos 
I do have a like a booktube channel but that has been that's been dormant for a good year and a half almost probably so yeah <laughs> if you want to see book videos let me know um should I do them on the other channel or are you quite happy with them being condensed all on this channel um also let me know if you want to see a skincare video so I can babble on about skincare products and um I also wanted to know what you guys thought of the idea of sort of like rehauls or you know what I thought of stuff I bought um so I can go through like previous haul videos and tell you what I thought of things because I haven't really done a lot of follow-up on stuff that I've bought over the last year like maybe little snip snippets of products have been like oh my god I'm totally loving this but I do want to do like complete follow-ups on things that I've bought because I've I've bought them and gone like oh my god look at this and recommended them to you guys without actually long-term use and um, I just I would like to do follow-ups so if that's something you guys are interested in let me know and I will see you guys in my next video so thank you so much for watching and bye bye